I've been doing a lot of keys the past couple of weeks, and with me doing a large volume of keys, I have uncovered a decent amount of tips and a decent amount of unique strats that you can actually utilize in your own Mythic Plus dungeons. And we're going to be taken today to talk about five different tips that I have discovered over the course of the last couple of weeks and how you can utilize them in your own Mythic Plus keystones. Uh, now, these tips, I would say, are pretty useful, all things considered. There are some of them that might be a little bit niche. But in general, whenever I was looking to make this tip video, I was looking for tips that, you know, you could reasonably apply to your group and use inside of your dungeons. We're going to talk about how you kind of use them. The first one involves auto hammers on the first boss of Stone Vault. And as you can see from a clip here from Jinji, basically you spawn the spike. And whenever you spawn the spike, if you drop an auto hammer beneath your character, the auto hammer will kill the spike instantly. And you might think, why is this even useful? Uh, and it actually killed one that's right here as well. And you might think, why is this useful? This is actually going to smooth out the damage over the course of the entire fight. You're only actually ever in danger of dying to the dot damage from the spike whenever it's combined with another source of damage, such as the lines or such as the smash. And if you're only ever breaking these spikes, say with auto hammers, for example, say you only ever use auto use auto hammers for it it smooths out the damage of the fight entirely and it makes it a lot easier for your healer to actually be able to heal people um and so you know players are able to get talked back up and so utilizing auto hammers to kill like one two or potentially even like three of these spikes is good and then you have the healer heal through the rest in addition to that and, and something that's not necessarily talked about a lot is you actually want spikes blown up by the slam especially on the second set you don't actually want to blow them up with the lines uh and the reason for this is because the healer's gonna have a hard time of getting your player tops like to 100 percent hp prior to the slam coming in and so what you want to do instead is the second set of lines you just blow up zero of the pillars um and then whenever you blow up zero of the pillars the healer is able to get you topped up from the line damage and then the healer stacks all of their uh healing cooldowns with the slam and that makes sense because then everybody's gonna be able to be topped back up but this tip involves you know dropping auto hammers beneath your feet and it blows up some of the spikes the next tip involves the tyrannan villagers in mists of tyrannan scythe and basically it involves uh, canceling the stun cast and as you can see on screen right here uh, the mob will start casting the stun on my evoker and the stun just ends up breaking. You see this overgrowth cast is just going to cancel halfway through, and I'm not stunned. This happens with one talent, and it's called Jetstream from Shamans. And what it reads is, when Rush Totem's movement speed bonus is increased by 10%, and it now removes snares. How I think this is coded, and I'm, I'm not 100% sure, so I, because I haven't tested this with everything else, you should, you should go try this in the comments and let me know exactly how this works. But I know it works with Jetstream specifically, which is a staple, because Shaman is so OP this tier. Um... So how this works is basically whenever the overgrowth is being applied to a player, that's attached to a slow. Um, that snare gets removed by Jetstream, thus allowing you to not get you know stunned by that stun. And we ended up running two, both of our shamans ended up running Jetstream whenever we were doing this dungeon on 13, and nobody got stunned. And this improved our consistency and success rate of the first pull by a substantial amount. Of course, our DK can just get out of this with IBF, meld, uh, AMS off the stun, because it's a magic stun, and so uh, they didn't need help, but people like me, I needed help. I have a suspicion that you can utilize things such as like even potentially druid shape shifting, but also like freedom and tiger's lust. You should go be looking to test these things and see if those things remove the overgrowth. I do know that things such as like AMS and meld work on it, and invis and feign death work on it, but I don't know about the other you know movement freeing effects. The next one is a rescue slash, you know, infernal strike, heroic leap, skip in Necrotic Wake. Now, Blizzard added this Necromancer pack, and this Necromancer pack sucks for a couple of reasons. First off, all of the other Brittle Bone mages from the other Necromancer packs have their Frostbolt Volley removed, but whenever Blizzard added back this Necromancer pack, they forgot to remove the Frostbolt Volley from these Brittle Bone mages, making this pack nuclear. And in general, you don't really want to be playing other Necromancer packs. The only reason we even play the other Necromancer pack with the Marauders is because there's a spear there, and 
and we need the spear more or less and so we, we were trying to figure out a way to actually skip past this pack and somebody has discovered that you can actually just rescue by this guy and so what we do is we get on a two-seater mount and you see where i'm angling my mouse here uh we get our players on the two-seater mount uh and i rescue them by and then we we, we convert it through if we don't have uh, enough rescues but um yeah i just rescue through we we burn it and we make it through past that pack and are able to skip it easily because that pack sucks and does give great count next tip wow and this is the fourth tip here we have the ri fiery ricochet from the second boss of siege of Baralis, dread captain lockwood oh my gosh let me do that so basically how this works is the fiery ricochet will shoot on a player and bounce to four other players. Of course, it can be immune off by effects like AMS and whatnot. But if, if one player is actually 40 yards or further, the fiery ricochet will bounce to the other players. But the dot that the fiery ricochet applies will not be applied to those players. And so... I didn't have a good POV of this. I, I, I did have a, our healer do it like a couple runs ago, but I don't think I was streaming. So basically our healer needs to be further back. And if they're over 40 yards away from the stack, from the players, not from the boss, but from the rest of the players, then it will bounce to us doing the initial damage from the fiery ricochet, but it won't apply the dot. And that's actually a huge detail because right here you see it getting applied to us and it does an insane amount of damage to the point where we're like, we're like AMZing and, and using intervene shield and stuff like that. But you can have people be 40 yards away from other players. Again, it's not from the boss. It's from other players. So in theory, we could actually be like on the other side of Lockwood. The downside is this, of this is it's kind of especially scary with your healer to be over 40 yards away from players because say it's targeted on somebody in the melee stack, right? They're not going to get dotted, which is fine. But the melee stack is going to get dotted by the fiery ricochet and they might have to be playing to catch up to heal. And that can be a bit sketch. And so it can be a bit difficult for healers. Maybe if you give them spatial or something like that, they can walk farther away from the boss on sets that it's on them or something like that. And that would work. Excellent. The last tip that I have involves the tailoring buff inside of Arakara. Now, most people, first off, they don't understand how to use the tailoring buff effectively. There's one real, really solid way to use this tailoring buff. And it actually involves the second mini boss that you typically kill in this dungeon that does the mass AOE five seconds into the pole or whatever and as you can see on screen right here we are we have fully gotten out of combat with the trash we are wait we were waiting for our shadow priest to go and grab that tailoring buff what's going to happen here is we're going to pull this mini boss and as the mini boss starts casting its aoe we are going to stun it um now it doesn't it will actually recast if you stun it during the aoe it'll also recast if you stun it while it's pre-ramping but what this does is it pretty much ensures that you're only going to get one cast of this Call of Blood. Um, because this is a 12 second long stun. And so, so basically here as well, now we know that whenever the mob comes out of the stun, it's going to be doing the AoE. And so you actually have a lot more time to pre-ramp your heals, to press Zephyr on time, to pre-sack players. We link there and I Zephyr just to allow people a lot more safety on this poll. Because I think the hardest part of this is just not recognizing that the AoE is happening five seconds into the poll. And... If you ever get a second AoE, you can actually be in a lot of danger because the amount of and the strength of the defensives that you need to be pressing on that AoE is very high. That's it. Those are the five tips that I have to show you to help increase your success rate in Mythic Plus. I hope it helps you guys so much, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.